Hey guys, welcome back to Jibber Jab Reviews. Well, I finally have my hands on the new Galaxy Watch Active, and I wanted to give you a review of the device so that you can get a feel for not only how it looks, but what it has to offer. And I'm gonna give you my top pros and cons of the device as well. Now, this is gonna be the first of a few videos I'm gonna make because I literally just picked this up 24 hours ago, so my testing has been fairly light, but over the next few days, I'll be providing more insight into its features and capabilities, as well as some real world fitness testing. Now, today's video will be a high overview of the device, as I know many of you have been on the fence as to whether or not you should pick this up, maybe as your first smartwatch, or if you wanna upgrade from your current model. So as I go through the features, I'm gonna rate whether I think something is a pro or a con with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then I'll give a final takeaway in my thoughts right at the end of the review. Okay, so let's start with the obvious, and that being the design. Now they say beauty is subjective, so I don't know what you guys think of it, but I'm gonna be brutally honest here and say it definitely looks and feels much better than what I was expecting. There are no sharp corners anywhere on the case, and even the buttons blend in really nicely, and I'm gonna speak more about those when I get to the navigation functionality. It also comes with a very comfortable silicon band, and it has a really nice feel to it. Plus, it's a 20 millimeter, which means you can easily swap it with your Gear Sport or your Galaxy 42 millimeter watch, so that's great. It's got the quick release pins, very easy to do. They also provide you with a short and a longer band in the box, so even if you do happen to have a larger wrist, at least you're still gonna be able to secure the device to you without any issues. And yes, it is a small device at only 40 millimeters, and especially when you put it next to the S3 and the Galaxy Watch, so keep this in mind if you do happen to have larger wrists, as the case will look quite small on you. Now, my wrists are not large to begin with, so it wasn't too bad on me, and on my wife's wrists, it looked perfectly fine. Which, by the way, this was a gift for her, and she's thrilled about it, although she keeps bothering me to hurry up with the review so she can take it back. Now going back to the device's case, you can see it's also incredibly lightweight and thin. And once you have this on your wrist, you're not even gonna notice that you're wearing it. And since this is a fitness-focused smartwatch, then I'd say Samsung has done a great job here in making it extremely comfortable. And since it has a smooth screen and lacks that bezel like the other Samsung smartwatches, this also means that you're less likely to get it caught on clothing, and the thinner profile also means less chance of hitting it against something in the gym. So if you're big into fitness or love to run, then this would be a great companion because I've used my S3 and Galaxy Watch for working out and I find it quite cumbersome in comparison. And since we're talking about fitness, this watch comes packed with a variety of different health and fitness widgets. There's actually two extra ones on the active watch compared to the Galaxy Watch, and these are called the Daily Active and Weight Management Widgets. The device also automatically detects walking, running, and cycling, and users can manually track 39 different activities. And in conjunction with the Samsung Health app, the Galaxy Watch Active also sends you personalized notifications related to your stress levels, your sleep habits, and overall activity level, and it will even tell you to get moving if it detects you inactive for a prolonged length of time. Now in a future video, I'm gonna be taking this outside for a run so I can give you guys a more detailed report on the fitness accuracy, but from a high level, those are just some of the health and fitness related items that it comes with. So one of my biggest concerns about getting this device was the lack of a rotating bezel. But let me set the record straight right now and say that if you had the same concern, you might as well throw that out the window because the screen is incredibly responsive to the point that I wish there was a way to reduce the sensitivity because you can flip through all those menus effortlessly and you still have your back and home buttons there on the side, although you can see they're even more form-fitting to the case than say the side buttons of the Galaxy Watch or even the S3. Again, the sleeker profile means less chance of it getting caught on clothing, which is why it's the perfect design for someone active. 
Okay, so those are my positive takeaways for the device thus far. And here are a couple concerns or things that you should consider and weigh for yourself. First, the battery is small. It's actually considerably smaller than any of the other smartwatches in Samsung's collection. I charged this to 100% last night, and by the time I'm posting this video, almost 24 hours later, I'm down to less than half battery life. Again, this is with fairly light use. I've only been using one of their preloaded watch faces. I disabled the constant heart rate monitoring and I have limited notifications being pushed from my phone. So realistically, if you're using this for more health and fitness tracking, perhaps to play music and to have things that eat up your battery, such as the brightness level, animated watch faces, etc., then you're probably looking at one full day possibly two before having to recharge. So this may or may not be an issue for you if you're gonna use this as your daily watch. Now mine also came with the wireless charging pad, so it's not inconvenient by any means to just throw it on that charger overnight. The nice thing is I've also tested the charger with the Gear Sport, the S3 and the Galaxy Watch, and that wireless charger also works flawlessly with all these devices too, so that's a bonus. Remember that if you're purchasing the S10, then you also have the option of charging the active watch directly from the phone, which is another pretty cool bonus. Okay, and other things to keep in mind, you're still only getting four gigabytes of internal storage on this one, and out of the box, 2.5 gigabytes has already been used for the operating system and the preloaded watch faces, apps, and widgets. So if you're planning on using this for working out and say you wanna download music to it or connect to your premium Spotify account and download your playlist to it, then keep in mind that that remaining 1.5 gigabytes is gonna be eaten up pretty quickly. And since I did bring up music, Note that you cannot listen to music through the watch. It either has to be played through the phone or a Bluetooth paired headset. Maybe this isn't a huge issue, but I reported in a pre-launch report that the watch will have a microphone and speaker on it. And unfortunately, this was not the full picture because while it does have a microphone, you cannot use this device to project sound or to be used to have phone conversations on. Placing a phone call means using your phone. Although if you do have a Bluetooth headset, that functionality could still work with the watch, but again, you'll have to have something paired to it. Unlike the S3 or the Galaxy watch, for example, I can literally have a conversation with someone directly from my watch. Again, this may not be an issue for you, but something to keep in mind, as there's no plans for a standalone LTE version of this watch either. Okay, so here's my takeaway. If you're a health and fitness lover and want something that's incredibly lightweight, sleek and modern looking and don't mind having to charge it more frequently than Samsung's other smartwatches, then this is a great watch to pick up for the price. It still provides much of the same capabilities of the Galaxy Watch, including an excellent waterproof rating and the newest operating system and user interface, but in a smaller package and with the added health and fitness features and widgets. Okay guys, as I said, this is just a high overview and hands-on review of the device. I'm gonna give it a fitness test in the coming days, meaning once the snow actually disappears here, and I'll also test the sleep functions and the new blood pressure measurement feature. Thanks again for watching the review, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Until then, take care. Thanks again for watching our review and if you liked it then show us some love with a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share the video with your friends because with your support it helps me keep the channel going so I can continue to offer you guys discounts, giveaways and of course fresh content. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, take care.